Good morning and welcome to Great Basin National Park. I actually camped in the park last night. There's a, there's a canyon called Snake Canyon in the park that you can drive through. And there are some like dispersed camping sites in between. They're like throughout the canyon. Not really dispersed camping, they're just kind of unimproved campsites. So for example, here we have a spot for my car and a picnic table and a fire pit slash grill and a tent platform. But there's no water, there's no electricity or anything like that. And anyway, these are free campsites, so that's pretty great. There are maybe a dozen campsites throughout the canyon. I spent yesterday in the National Park fishing. I uh, really enjoyed it. There's some great fishing here. If you're into a very small stream fishing, I uh, ended up catching, I think, seven fish, six brown trout and one, bro uh, one brook trout. There are really two levels of National Park, I think. There's like the top tier National Park, like Yellowstone and Yosemite, and then there's kind of the, the B grade National Park below that. Great Basin National Park is a B-grade national park. It's not a top-tier park, but that doesn't mean that it's not a beautiful place that's worth seeing, because it really is. Um, it's just, you just have to kind of temper your expectations a little bit. There are really four main things to see here. The first one is Wheeler Peak. Um, that is the highest mountain in the, in the national park. It is the second highest mountain in Nevada. Oh, this is in Nevada, by the way. I don't think I said that. Great Basin National Park is in eastern Nevada. You can hike to the top of the mountain or you can walk to like the base of the mountain where there's um, the only glacier glacier in Nevada. Really, it's more of a year-round snow field, but uh, it's the only one in Nevada. I'm here in the middle of May, which means that it's still spring and there's still a lot of snow up there. And so the you can't really hike up the mountain unless you're willing to hike several extra miles because the road leading up to the start of the hike uh, isn't plowed yet. It stops, you know, a couple thousand vertical feet below the uh, below the trailhead. The second major thing to see is bristlecone pines. Uh, these are really old trees <laughs> that uh, that only grow in uh, in a certain handful of areas in the Great Basin and these trees grow to be you know several thousand years old they're some of the oldest living things out there and uh, there's a trail that goes uh, well the trail I said that goes kind of to the base of Glacier Peak that goes to the rock glacier or to the to the glacier it um, it goes through a large stand of bristlecone pine trees and it's really cool and that's definitely worth seeing but again it's too high, there's too much snow there right now, so at this time of year, you can't see it. The third big thing to see is Lexington Arch. This is a big limestone arch that looks really cool. The road to that trailhead is a high clearance four-wheel drive road, and so I probably wouldn't be able to make it anyway, but on top of that, um, the road there is closed because of fire. I think there was a wildfire in the area and there they need to make some repairs to the road or to the trail or something and so I couldn't go there even if I wanted to. Uh, and then the fourth big thing to see which I will be seeing today and uh, showing you guys is the cave system. So there's a there's a cave called Lehman Cave or Lehman Caves even though it's just one cave and there are lots of uh, really interesting formations inside of the cave. It's supposed to be really neat. And I'll be going there uh, first thing this morning. After that, I'll go on a couple of hikes. The ones I'll be doing are relatively lower elevation hikes because again, there are several feet of snow up in the high, high country. Uh, this is my second time to this national park. I have been here in the summer and I have hiked up Wheeler Peak. Definitely worth doing. You know, it's a big 13,000 foot mountain. Um, really neat, to, really neat hike. I have hiked to the glacier, I have hiked through the bristlecone pines. All of that is definitely worth doing if you're here in the summer. But for now, I will pack up, I will drive out of the park and then back into the park, and I'll show you, show you all that good stuff when I get there.
the cave now, it took about an hour and 40 minutes. It was wonderful. I really enjoyed that. Beautiful cave, great tour. I'm gonna go on a hike now, on a couple of hikes, but uh, let's start off with one that's a loop. A loop hike that's I think like three miles long. It's a bit of a drive to get there. All right, so I'm at the trailhead right here. And I'm gonna hike this dotted line and that dotted line and then that dotted line. So I'm gonna make a little loop. I talked to a ranger yesterday and he said that there was snow at the top where the connector trail connects to make the, the loop. So uh, I'm expecting some snow. He said you might need snowshoes. I don't have snowshoes so if there is snow and if it's not hard packed I expect I'll be post holing through the snow but shouldn't be too bad either way. Oh, and one thing I think I forgot to mention this morning when I was talking about the park overall is that there's no entrance fee. This is a free national park to enter. And there are even free campsites, but you do have to pay for the cave tour. That's how they get you. Even then, though, it's cheaper than a normal national park entrance fee. Well, I am slightly lost. I, uh lost the trail but it's not a big deal i have the the trail marked on my gps on my phone and so as long as i just keep heading in the general direction of where i know i should be going i'll get to the next trail intersection without too much trouble i think famous last words right found my way back onto the trail. Basically, I just missed the little section of trail that was the connector. Uh, but I knew the general direction I needed to go, so that's where I went. I'm now at the top of the circle, and I'll be heading back down to the parking lot. Lots of these little yellow flowers starting to bloom. Buttercups? Is that what they're called? Well, I'm almost back at the trailhead. And that was a really nice little hike. It was. Uh, exactly three miles. Right now I'm at 2.99 miles and I'm almost back. Really nice little hike. Not earth shattering, but really pleasant and serene. It was nice to be by the water on the way up and, and part of the way down. Good hike. Now let's go on to the next one. All right, we are at the Osceola Ditch. This is as far up the main road in the park you can drive right now. Up here, there's still snow up toward Wheeler Peak. Got a pretty sweet camper van right here. So the Osceola Ditch was basically a, I guess a canal, for lack of a better word, built in the late 1880s, early 1890s, for the purpose of gold mining. Gold was discovered a few miles northwest of the park but they needed water to process the ore and to w wash away the, the mountainside or whatever. And they didn't have enough water at the town. The town was called Osceola. And so they built an 18 mile long ditch from Lehman Creek across these mountains over to the town of Osceola. But apparently it cost more than it was worth. It cost more than the amount of gold that they found. And so after 10 years, it was abandoned. And so I think this trail will lead to a section of the ditch that we can walk along. I think you can walk along like five miles of it in total. Um, I'm just gonna hike for 
20 minutes or so just to see what it's like. So this was the ditch, or what's left of it. In some places it was just a, a ditch that was dug into the ground, and then in, in other places it was a wooden flume. Here's wood left over from some part of the construction. And a bit more. So again, this is, the trail is like in the ditch here. Well, I think I'm about done with the ditch. I've had my fill. Uh, I've been hiking for 18 minutes, probably gone a little bit less than a mile, but uh, you know, there's not really a whole lot to see here. Once you've seen the ditch, you don't get much more by continuing to walk for several more miles along the ditch. This trail is okay. Uh, not, not a must do by any means. There are occasional nice views of the mountains to the to the north, but the views are better just driving to the parking area. So worth doing if you're interested, if you just want to see it. But beyond that, I think it's a case of diminishing returns. And I think this will complete my time here in the national park in Great Basin. I'm gonna head back to my car and then drive about 60 miles west to the town of Ely, Nevada. I need to get some supplies, and I'm gonna head north. I'll probably find a campsite somewhere north of Ely in far eastern Nevada. Well, I found a campsite. It is several hours later. It's 7.35 now. I drove an hour west from Great Basin National Park, stocked up on some, on, uh, some supplies, drove two hours north, and here I am. I am uh, somewhere in eastern Nevada. Or mosquitoes around. I'm gonna make this quick. I'm in eastern Nevada, just south of Wendover. And here's camp for the night. <sighs> Pay attention to this mountain here. That's Pilot Peak. The tallest mountain in this area, and I'm going to be climbing it in two days. Got lots of fun things planned tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a good day, too. And uh, hopefully, these bugs don't eat me alive. Don't get in the car. But <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what your favorite part was, and I'll see you in the next one.